going to do a quick video um, on something heavy equipment related since that is my main thing. And uh, one of my uh, viewers said, you know, after my last video commented, hey, why don't you post any more heavy equipment stuff? So I'm going to. So I was called uh, by a friend of mine who owns a 740 rock truck. Uh, so the air conditioner wasn't working right on it. So they parked the machine to fix it. So I asked yeah, me to run out and look at it. So this has an orifice type uh, air conditioning system. Some of the cat machines have an expansion valve. Uh, but this is an, or an orifice type. So first thing we do is we hook the gauges on and uh, we check the pressure. So here's what I have the pressure. You can see the pump's working good. The pressures are right for, for how much Freon's in there. Uh, but you can tell on the low side gauge set it's low. So it's, it's basically just low on Freon. So what we need to do when this is low on Freon, we just have to open up some cabinets on it, or you know, remove some covers and, and look look for leaks. Now to look for leaks on this system, on these systems, what I do, it helps a lot because we're in the we're on the dirt, so we get a lot of uh, dust on things. You just look for if you if there's a leak, you'll find it because it's going to have a pile of dirt clumped around it. So here's the uh, condenser unit right here, mounted by the radiator. Here's the upper line. It's totally clean. If I track it back all the way through to where it goes back under the cab, it's totally clean. Here's the uh, outlet line for it. There's something over there, it's totally clean. So then we'll go up next to the compressor and we'll look and see if the compressor looks like it's been leaking. We'll go ahead and shut this off. That sounds better. So we go down to the compressor and we'll look down here. There's nothing leaking around the back. Um, I mean, it looks like possibly maybe something around here where the lines go in the back. But it's hard to say because you get so much oil from the engine on here. Um, I look around here by the pulley, by the clutch. If it's all, you know, full of dust here, then you you know, you know that the the pump's going bad, that the seal's leaking. Um, one thing on the history of this. Ah, excuse me, my sinuses are plugged up. Um, this machine was uh, had an engine fire a few months back, and uh, they actually had me go through and change all the hoses, you know, everything. It, you know, the air cleaner was burned off, all the harnesses were burned up. So we, I went through and replaced everything that was burnt down, burnt up on this thing. Uh, it's been running good for the last month or so after that. Um, so I'm checking the lines out real close about around that because um, it had a lot of melted plastic land on these lines. Right here on the high pressure line, you can see the plastic on here. So, you know, I gotta look along those to make sure that there's no, no leaking on those. And it all looks good. I've traced all the lines back already. Uh, this pressure line here goes under the cab to the uh, condenser. Uh, where it gets cooled off and then it goes to the uh, dryer then to the uh, orifice and then from the orifice you know it goes to the orifice turns from a liquid to a gas and it goes to the uh, uh, to the condenser unit or I'm sorry to the evaporator core where the air blows across it and goes cool air in the cab um, here's the suction line right here looks really good all the way along Let me climb over the engine here Uh, sorry about my sinuses. It's uh, kind of dry, windy up here, and it's really bad for my sinuses here. So we follow it here. Here's the suction line with some more uh, melted rubber on it. Um, I don't see anything leaking. There's no dust like piled up on it. It goes back down here, uh, you know, under the cab, and it goes back to the uh, evaporator core. I don't see any leaks. Now, when it was running, I could see on this side of the uh, dryer. Yeah, this is the orifice side. The orifice is right in here. This was frosting up really bad. It was frosting up on the high pressure line right here going to the uh, evaporator. And that usually indicates that you're low on Freon. Um, but don't just, don't be one of my operators that'll just jump in the machine and the AC isn't quite cold enough for them. So we run down to AutoZone and buy some R134A. It just pumps a bunch in there because then they overfill it. And then the air conditioner works even worse. So don't do that. I always use a proper set of gauges on it. You know, I've got R134A gauges on it. Um, so I'm just gonna add a little bit of Freon. Uh, we'll see how it lasts. If it, uh, the pressure goes down again in the next you know, couple of weeks, we're gonna have to investigate further. Um, but if it stays up, you know, then we're good. So it's hard to say why it's lower now, but it could be because you know, it was just in the 100 degrees range. It was about 115 out here for a while. And now it's you know, 80 degrees, 70 degrees. So. R134A is very reactive to temperature, so when the temperature cools off, then the uh, Freon's, you're going to have lower pressure. So I'm going to add some more, and we'll see how it does. Um, you know, if it just makes it through this winter, we're fine. 
then there's not really a problem. It was just uh, undercharged last time, or it has a very, very slow leak that we'll probably never find. All right, so I've got my 30-pound uh, can of 134A. Uh, I'll go ahead and hook up the yellow line, the uh, charge line to it, and uh, we'll start it back up. We'll add some more Freon. We'll get the pressures up, uh, up to where they belong, and hopefully that'll be it on this one. So let's go ahead. Okay, I just don't see if the audio come out good here, but it's not all uh, subtitled. I've got to hook up to my R134A. Uh, I know the charge is uh, on the cold side. You're supposed to charge with electric gas, the ball upright, but they always charge it with a down. I've never had a problem with that, and it just seems like it works better for me. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add that Freon to so get up to about 32 PSI on the suction side. So we get it to hold there, and that it seems like this is a sweet spot for this air conditioning uh, so that the system works right. stabilized for a little bit, just about a minute it'll stabilize. Uh, my low pressure should sink down a little bit more. Uh, you can see my high pressure is about 275. Yeah, actually that stabilizes our 32 PSI on the suction side. I'm extremely happy with it. That's just where these systems work great. Um, I've, I've repaired uh, hundreds of these things and uh, that's the way I do it. I know other people have certain ways they do it. They weigh the Freon exactly. They've got different ways to do it, whatever. Uh, but I've been doing air conditioning on heavy equipment since the early 90s. So uh, it's been working for me. So yeah, it's definitely stabilized there. So now it's going to the cab and we'll feel the, the air, see how cold it is. Um, sometimes I'll put a thermometer in there just to feel it, you know. It should get down to about 32. Um, or, well, not 32, but like 34 to 36 uh, Fahrenheit. So yeah, it's cold. It's working good. So uh, that's about it. Um, I hope this, this helps out, helps somebody out, you know, I've been able to diagnose these systems and how to charge them and what to look for if they're low on Freon. Um, like I said, if it, if it leaks down again, I'm going to pull the cover off of the side of the evaporator core and I'll look in there and see if it's leaking in there. But I think it's just because we switched from summer, from a really hot summer, um, and it was, who knows when it was charged last, I have no idea, we charged it. Um, but you know, when it's hotter out, it creates higher pressure and it seems to work better. And when it gets colder out, they don't seem to work as well, which seems counterintuitive. You would think um, that, it, you know, it wouldn't work that way. But um, actually on a cold day, if I'm working on one of these units on a cold day and I, I need to charge it up and say it's like 45, 50 degrees out, 
it's hard to charge these 13040 systems. You can't get enough Freon in the system. Because um, it's so weird and expansive with heat. When it gets cold, it just shrivels up. And, uh, you know, the pressure just goes down. And when it gets hot, the stuff just, it, it climbs like crazy. Okay, so just for a quick recap on that air conditioner. Um, so what the symptoms were that we were told by the customer was that, uh, you know, they're running at night, for one thing. Uh, but that the windshield would start to fog up. Um, you know, off and on. And so at first I'm thinking, okay, maybe the heater core is leaking. So we thought about that, but there was no coolant leaking out anywhere. There was none down in the, in the bottom of the air, air conditioner housing down by the filter. Um, but then, you know, looking at the, the pressure of the system, you know, being that it was low, there's, there's kind of two reasons why it could cause, cause it to uh, fog up like that or to cause the air conditioner not to blow enough cold air. Because basically that air conditioner, it's working as a defrost unit as well. And so if they're working at night, you know, it's colder out, um, it's been getting down about 50 degrees at night in that range. And then you've got the cab inside, it's warmer, the guy's breathing in there, you've got an operator, the windows are closed. Um, and so if the air conditioner is not working, you know, effectively enough for the defroster, you know, it's going to fog up like that. Um, but two things, you know, first, if the pressure's low and then the, uh, the compressor kicks off, as soon as the pressure gets down below 10 PSI on the, on the suction side, um, you know, it's got a safety switch that cuts the compressor off. So your air conditioner quits working for a little while until the pressure builds back up. Um, you know, it's got to transfer through the orifice, through the uh, evaporator core, and then back to the pump. And that's where the switch is, it's at the pump. Um, you know, it's a delayed effect, right? So then the air conditioner kind of warms up and quits working for a little bit. And then that can cause that warmer air to kind of push up in there. You know, warmer air has more moisture, so then it fogs up the window. Um, that or, like I showed you on the lines, where the lines were frosting up, those systems are really susceptible to the, uh, to the uh, evaporator core freezing up. They'll actually ice up if it's humid out and the system's not charged correctly. Um, it'll, it'll just get an ice barrier on there. And that effect, effectively, you know, you think, oh, good ice, you know. Well, the air can't blow across the ice because it's plugging the core. So it's causing it to act like there's no air conditioner. Plus, you get the more humid air because of that, all that can, moisture that's there in that ice. Because, you know, once it starts kicking off or, you know, not working correctly and the ice can melt, whatever happens, um, you get that extra moisture in the air and that'll fuck up the windows as well. So it's one of the two. So, you know, when you see symptoms like that, you know, I mean, obviously the first thing to do, you always put the gauges on first and you see what the pressures are doing. Um, you know, you check right away when you hook them up to see what they are. Um, you know, on the gauges, you can look on the gauges, it'll show what the pressure should be for the ambient air temperature. Say it's 80 degrees out, it'll show on the needles, you know, you just line it up with the temperature. That's pretty accurate, but it's not, to me, it's not 100%. Um, so then you start up the system and you just see what it's doing. You watch your low pressure, your high pressure, kind of see what the system's doing. And um, I mean, this one was easy. It was just low pressure. It was simple to figure out. But um, those are all just things to look for and kind of the way these systems work. So anyways, that's about it. Um, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. And stay tuned for my next video because it's going to contain this car. Anyways, thanks for watching. Uh, just hit the like button, share this video, subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And uh, maybe I'll get some more heavy equipment videos out. I know I've been doing a lot of the uh, military vehicle stuff I've been working on, uh, which has been real fun. And I've got some more coming up. i got a real great one coming up on a, uh, on a Lamborghini that I'm working on. And um, anyways, thanks for watching.